are going to do the initial root prune on this candy kitchen Japanese maple and pot it up in its first training pot. It's in this green plastic. This is how they packaged it for shipment to make sure the soil didn't move. And it was a pretty good container to just leave it in for the last few weeks while I was waiting to get around to potting this tree up. I'm really excited to see how the Nabari looks. It could be great, it could be awful, but either way, we're gonna move forward and develop this tree. Oh yeah, this has got some really nice root development down in here. It's like the ultimate version of an unboxing right here. It's the board we're gonna use later to get those roots plated out. This is actually a really ingenious packaging technique here. So what Ed did is he wrapped this entire tree up with a board underneath the tree, and then he used that board to screw it into the wooden box that he made so that it couldn't move around in shipping. All right, let's take an initial spin around this tree here. This root here really played it out quite nicely, and it looks like it's got some larger roots ramified already coming off of it. A lot of these are gonna have to get reduced back, but there could be a good start. We're definitely gonna have to dig down a little bit deeper into this root ball to figure out exactly where this nabari is. So let's get started with that. This ice pick is a really handy tool for getting at those roots. This is gonna be a little bit more abrasive than using a normal wooden chopstick, but for the initial stages on the outer side of the nabari, this is gonna work great. Our main goal here is to just start loosening up this root ball so we can see what's underneath here. As we go around, it's okay to start chopping some of these radial encircling roots to make sure that they're not slowing us down. It's gonna make it a lot easier for us to get this root ball loosened up. It looks like Ed had this tree planted in some loamy soil mixed with some sand, and it was definitely heavily fertilized. You can see that the fertilizer bits all over the top of the soil here. Oh yeah, this is so exciting. I can't wait to see how these roots look down under here. I'm hoping we have a pretty nice start to a nabari. You know, sometimes when we dig these roots for the first time, it can make us, uh, it can force us to change the design completely based on the root development. I think it was Ryan Neal in one of his videos where he said that, you know, the nabari, the best base of your tree is, is one of the first things, the foundation of your tree that's gonna set you up for success. So, you know, that's not always 100% true. Sometimes you'll sacrifice the best nabari for the best line, the best branching, the best features of the tree, but dang, it sure does rank high. It's really hard to pass up a good nabari. As soon as I get going here, we'll probably turn this into a time lapse and you guys won't have to sit around for the long version. If there's anything critical, I'll definitely slow down and include that. Oh yeah, this sandy soil is actually loosening up really nicely. Looks like we've got a a lot of nice fibrous roots in here. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to clip those thickies here. That's gonna have to come off. That's gonna have to come off. There we go. Now remember, we did all this pruning up top on the tree because we wanted to get rid of all that excessively extended growth that's never gonna be usable in bonsai. The same thing's gonna be true here on the roots. And what's great about taking a tree and moving it from field growing conditions into the bonsai environment is if you do that initial pruning up top on the branches, you also do the same thing on the roots. What you're doing is you're kind of balancing the load on the tree. What I mean by that is the branches require a certain amount of nutrients and water to be pulled up to keep them going. And if you've reduced the branches back, that means the tree no longer needs the same amount of roots down below. And it sets you up perfectly for doing a major first root reduction as you move this tree into bonsai culture. Okay, folks, I'm gonna turn this into a time lapse now, and that way we can uh, fast forward this process a little bit. All right, we're starting to get down closer into the inner portion of the root ball here, so I've switched over to this wooden chopstick. It's gonna be a little more delicate on the roots. It's gonna slow us down a little bit, make sure we're not damaging any of these valuable roots. Now. I don't make chopsticks out of like raw pieces of bamboo that you buy online. This is a simple chopstick from Chinese takeout. These are free and if you don't have enough of these, you're probably not eating enough Chinese food. So get back at it. So I'm gonna go back to a time lapse and I'll meet you guys on the other side.
as we continue to work down into this root ball here out in the sun, these roots are starting to get a little bit dry. So make sure you're always giving them a spritz every couple of minutes to make sure they stay moist. Now we don't want to overdo it. It's a lot harder to loosen the soil when it's sopping wet, but we definitely want to protect those fine fibrous roots during this process. All right, well that was fun. Now that we're standing in a puddle of water, uh, you can see we were able to use the hose to get a lot of the additional soil mass out of this root ball. Now we can get down in there with the clippers and start reducing it from the bottom and work our way up toward the base of the trunk. A lot of really big roots that were cut off prior to shipping. This was in a really deep nursery can out there in California. I don't know exactly how, how big it was, but it was definitely at least three to four times as deep as the existing root ball here. I'm going to go back to time lapse. I'll come back and stop if there's anything important, but at this point we're basically just nibbling away trying to get down closer to the base. off this massive root. It was crossing over this way and there's a much better root hidden down under here. This is of course going to need to be shortened as well but this one here was way above the plane of the, the root, root line. So as it is the best nabari is going to be somewhere around this angle here. So these ones here are way too high. These are going to have to come off the tree. So sometimes you'll see roots like this that are up high and they kind of create this illusion that the nabari should be up higher. But when you dig down a little bit further, you can see that there's actually a much more developed root spread. Now this is far from perfect, but we're gonna set ourselves on the way to success by taking care of these really high roots. We're gonna go ahead and prune this root all the way back till it's flush. And this will heal over really quickly. There we go. See there? We kind of have it coming straight down. And these will get pruned back. But we've gotten that line down. And as you can see when we rotate, down around this level here, there's a lot more splitting roots. Perhaps in the future we'll do a few root grafts by thread grafting them through this larger trunk and start to fill in this nabari area. There's some other roots over in this section. This one here crosses up over this larger root. I'm going to keep it for now because I may end up removing this bottom root altogether, but I haven't decided that yet. I'm going to go ahead and move back to time lapse and start doing the final refinement work on the bottom. As you can see, I've just been nibbling away as well as I can at these large roots. After each round, of, I've been spraying it down with a high pressure hose to get all that extra dirt out and that allows me to see what I'm working with here. And you can see we've really started to come down to a fairly plated out root structure here, but I'm going to keep nibbling it back just a little bit further. I want to do all that really drastic work now while the tree is pumped full of energy. This does seem a little bit extreme perhaps, but this is all going to heal quite nicely come springtime. As you can see, we've really chipped away at the bottom there, creating that nice flat base of our Navari. There are some structural imperfections here, but I'm really very satisfied. Uh, with how much development is already here. This root here is kind of curving in the wrong direction and it's also got another root underneath that's going way under here. It's totally in the wrong direction so I'm gonna go ahead and chop that. And I want to also discuss why I chopped it the way I did. Oh, missed a little piece there. Okay, so on the underside of this root I chopped it at a flat angle, and that's going to allow roots to grow radially. There's a number of large roots around here. Oh, this one I think I can nibble away just a little bit more. Good, nice and flat cut there. So the underside of our trunk, this is solid wood here, but it's a little bit convex. So there's actually a high point in the middle and it's a little bit wobbly. It doesn't sit exactly straight. That, that's okay. This is going to continue to develop over time and it's gonna even out. Our primary goal of that initial root work 
was to get rid of all these downward growing roots and really get up under there so that we found the base of the tree. This is gonna allow us to fit the tree into its future bonsai pot. Remember, it's gonna take us several years to fully develop the canopy of the tree. We're gonna do the same thing with the rootstock here. So for the initial planting, I've got this large training pot here. I've already got it screen wired into the bottom of it. This is a really large pot. It's probably about 18 inches across. This I actually got at a local big box home decorating store. And these work great. They're a lot lower cost than a training pot that you buy specifically for bonsai. And this was a great one because it had the four large holes at the bottom, which means we're gonna have some great drainage. So to develop this tree, let me set this pot up. I'm gonna move you in closer so you can see what I'm doing with the soils. So for starters, we're gonna lay down a drainage layer of large grain pumice. It doesn't have to be super deep, just enough to make sure we're covering the bottom of the container. Uh, we don't ever wanna have this pot get waterlogged. Next, I'm gonna add a mixture of perlite that I picked up at a local nursery for a really good deal in a large bulk rate. And I'm gonna have it mix with the leftover Akadama when we replanted our Oridono Nishiki. Perlite is a little bit brighter white, so it's not as attractive as pumice, but it does work just as well. After establishing this base layer, the next thing that we put in is this large plywood board. And it's only got about an inch of gap around the outside, and that's gonna allow the roots to escape over the side and continue to grow down into the entire pot. The board is not gonna allow any roots to grow in the downward direction. Everything's gonna have to grow out laterally, and that's gonna help develop our nabari. Before we put the tree in, we do wanna put a little mound of akadama in there to make sure that we don't have any gaps directly underneath the tree. So we're gonna spread that out, and we're gonna nestle the tree down in there. If you look from the side of the tree, you can really see the level where most of these smaller roots are emanating from. We wanna make sure that that's pretty level. As we discussed in the previous video, the tree is slightly more upright than it was originally in the packaging material. That's the good stuff, triple red line Akadama. Almost there. You may have noticed that I have the tree slightly offset to one side. This area of rootage over here was a little bit more sparse than the rest of the perimeter of the tree. So I offset the tree slightly here to your right to allow a little more space over here for roots to grow. Although I didn't wire the tree in, it is important to make sure that every little gap is full with soil. Making sure that there's no air gaps is gonna give it the tree the most opportunity to grow nice, fine, fibrous roots. When you chop stick, you can see that the soil drops down. That's because it's filling in all of the little air pockets that are left when we initially poured it in. Making sure we get rid of all these air pockets is imperative to You know your chopsticking is complete when the tree stops moving. This thing is nice and stable. You might be wondering why I didn't wire it, but the tree is so large and heavy, there was no real need for me to secure it, and I'm gonna be super careful with this tree. I also didn't use a screw to attach the plywood to the bottom of the tree. There's no need, this tree is nice and heavy. We're gonna be careful with the tree as we move it around the garden, and it's gonna develop nicely. It'll also make it a lot easier to remove the tree when it comes time to repot again next year. Putting that screw right up into the center of the tree, although, fairly low risk, I don't really see the need to puncture into the heart of the tree for no reason. All right, the next step is to lug this monster outside so I can get it watered in. Okay, now that we have the tree watered in, 
We don't have to do any more rushing. Tree's all settled in, it's looking nice, but we do have a little bit more refinement work to do on some of these root cuts. We wanna make sure that they heal smoothly, so it's important that we get a nice smooth cut. I'm gonna come back in here and take a few more little nibbles out of this. There we go, slightly concave. That'll give it a little bit of room to round out. This little nub is sticking out slightly as well. We wanna flatten that out to make sure we get a nice smooth heel. There we go, much better. That one's still quite prominent there on this backside. Let me rotate it around so you guys can see. I'm gonna use my knob cutters on that one. If I can help it, I'm gonna to try to leave a little piece of tissue between these two cuts. It'll help it heal a little quicker than if I connect them. All right, that's much better. All right, we have this one really large root that we removed over here, and we do need to winnow that down just a little bit as well. That looks nice and smooth. All right, and it looks like there's one more over here I need to clean up. This little root's still a little bit rough. I accidentally damaged this other root, but that'll heal just fine. As with all of our pruning we did up on the canopy of the tree, we're gonna come back after we're done pruning up these roots and we're gonna cover them all with cut putty. As before, we're still using the gray cut putty, the non-hormone putty. We put this cut putty on there. It's gonna occlude any infections from getting into the wood. Additionally, it's gonna keep water out. Now, roots need water, right? But a little too much water and it can cause rot while this is trying to heal. Additionally, we don't want it to issue any new roots above the Nabari line. We want all the new roots to happen down under the soil line here. finger a little bit wet before you apply the putty and that'll allow it to stick really well to the wood without sticking to your finger. All right let's get this big one. There we go and one more to go. All right so our tree is all dialed in and ready for the growing season. Super excited. Now we do have about three or four weeks before our last frost so I'm gonna keep this safely inside the greenhouse. If we get any really cold nights, I'll move it into the garage to make sure it doesn't suffer any freezes. It would probably be fine with just a few degrees below freezing or a light frost, but because this is such a great tree, we definitely wanna make sure we're protecting it. I wanted to do one more close-up angle here because I think in the last video, I didn't give you quite enough detail and I wanted to give you one nice spin around the tree so you can see all the details of it. So here we go. And feel free to drop into the comment section and let me know where you think the best front is. Somewhere in this area here is gonna show you all three trunks. Remember, we may remove this back trunk and develop an apex here. Here's the primary trunk coming toward the viewer. Here's the secondary trunk coming off this way. This large branch section may also come off of the tree. Now, if I get really wild, I might cut this entire top off or air layer it so that I have a hierarchy. One big trunk here, one lesser trunk over here with a fatter, short, stumpy, and then we would have a really small one on this back. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Should I keep this secondary trunk nice and tall or should I compress it way back in June? I'm kind of open to both ideas at this point. All right, let me spin it around. I don't know how the perspective looks over there. It's probably coming right at you. All right, folks, thanks for joining me on another episode of Acer P Bonsai. 
in the next episode, we are going to take a look at my newest addition to the collection. It is a Red Sentinel Kabudachi Pre-Bonsai. I'm really excited to get started on that.